sit down. It's the richest country <laughs> of all time, yet it's wrapped Quit with inequality, head. in discipline, and in decency. And we think the tone of the last speech almost gives it away a little bit. That it seems to be saying, we have to do so much more things to change, we can try and adapt. We think that what it tells you, ladies and gentlemen, is that the American dream has failed. We've given it its chance, we've given it as best a shot as we can to run it, and it's not worked. <coughs> it's not practical, it's not viable, and it's not a system that can give us a fair, a good, and equal society. And so we think that when we've tried it, when it's failed, we say that we no longer dream it, we say that there's better things to dream, we say that there's other things to dream, and we say that we give up on that idea. I'm going to talk about two things. I'm going to talk about social mobility within America, how that's failed within the American dream, and then I'm going to talk about the erosion of the American dream, how some of its ideals have fallen by the wayside, and how some of them are just no longer valued and considered by Americans. And so we'll go on to that first one. Because the whole idea of this American dream is that whoever you are, whatever background you're from, you can reach the very top of society. You can become president, you can become like heads of companies, whatever. That's just not the case. In America, has that happened? The answer is no, ladies and gentlemen. If you look at the top um, 500 Ford companies and you look at the CEOs, 12 women out of 500 companies. It's 488 men, 12 women. 19 non-white, that's black, Latino, Asian, etc. And you see, you look at those statistics, and you say, well, why haven't they achieved the same heights? If everyone can reach the same potential, their max potential, and reach that top, then why don't we have so many heads of state, heads of business, from all these other backgrounds, all these other social walks of life. And we see it's because the American dream and their way of life doesn't support that. Because it says everyone makes your own way. That you get what you're given and you can then strive for yourself in life. But we're not going to help you, we're not going to support you. And that just fails to take a major thing into account. The system as it is now is rigged. It's rigged in favour of white, middle class, upper class men. And it doesn't take into account the fact that this whole American dream, this whole American ideal, that anyone can come into this system, that's not true. That doesn't work within the American society as it is at the moment. Because we're going to say that you have your own freedom, you can try and be the best you can, but we're not going to help you. That's the sort of sacrifices that all the freedom that they're about <coughs> to talk about and see is this virtue that we should exalt. That's what it leads to. It leads to isolation of people, it leads to alienation of people, and it leads to a lack of support for the people that most need it within a society. Secondly, in terms of rather than just looking at how it's happened currently and the social factors that might lead towards that, we also look at like the other way that we can try and lend ourselves to furthering a more equal society. And the main one that we heard from the first proposition we agree with, one of the major factors, education. The difference is, in America, with the American dream, you have access to everything. You are free to do whatever you want. But it's going to cost you. And if you want to get into education, if you want to give yourself or your children, your future generations, which the proposition wants to support, if you want to give them the best opportunity you can, then you're going to have to pay for it. And the simple fact is that when education costs are so high for the top colleges in America, and when it's going to take so much more money to put people into extra programs which can help them, develop them, make them into individuals with a better chance of succeeding to their highest ability within society, then only the people that can afford that will get there. And so whilst they talk about having everyone to a better standard of living, that doesn't happen. Because we can't train people to that, we don't give people the same opportunities, because when we say that you are free to do whatever you want, as the American dream lets us, then that doesn't happen. And so what that means is that in reality, it doesn't work, and planning for future generations, preparing them <coughs> to try and give them the best opportunity, they don't get that. The American dream isn't a dream, ladies and gentlemen, 
It's a fabrication. It's a look at what the reality is now. It does not support the facts which the American dream would like us to see. And we see that when it's a fabrication, when it's not worked, when we strive towards it, and it's something that's not succeeded, we say that we don't dream in anything. Why do I dream of the American dream when it's brought this, when I could dream to be Gandalf, it's two times cooler, mm. two times more likely to be successful? <laughs> Point. The erosion of the American dream as it is within society. Because we get see that in terms of like what we get in me. terms of key cornerstones of American rights, virtues, are held by this idea of freedom. And we see that in a lot of cases we've tried that, it's failed, it's not worked, and we're having to look at alternative <laughs> methods because it's not a system that works for us. For examples, firstly, healthcare. We heard a lot about it in the first speech. And we see that the situation was that we said that you're free to pay for your health care, you're free to get the sort of cover that suits you best. And then we realised that we were missing large numbers of people. That people were having to choose between eat which finger they would like to be saved. And we realised that the American dream wasn't helping these people, it was failing them. That's why we're trying to get these new systems in place. That's why we're getting Medicare, Obamacare and First Prop suggesting new voucher systems. Because the freedom that the American dream affords doesn't work, it's failed us. Second one, privacy. We look in this whole idea that you're free to do whatever you want and you should have some sort of right to protect that and privacy. That goes away because of this whole national security thing that First Prop tells us about. Because we get things like the Patriot Act which says in order for us to be the free society we would like to be, you're going to have to give up some of your rights, we're going to have to intrude on you, and you're going to get stepped all over because our government's going to do that. Because that's what the American dream is. It's arrogance towards the American people in that sense that says that we can protect ourselves at all costs over the cost of the people that we help. Third and final one, guns. Because we see that that's this whole thing about the Second Amendment. It's this freedom to carry guns. It's this freedom to protect yourself against whether it's the burglar or whoever the other bad boogeyman that's going to come at you and you need protection from. And we see where's that's got us, ladies and gentlemen. That's got us Columbine. That's got us Sandy Hook. That's your American dream, ladies and gentlemen. The right to go out, buy a gun, however you like, take it, and your ability to go into places and shoot people dead because of your freedom, because of your American dream because you're told that you have to strive towards success, that that's the ultimate aim. We place that so highly in the American dream, that you have the ability to do this. Well, you haven't got there. You must have failed somewhere along the way. That puts pressure on people. That's what drives people towards this. And we see that hundreds and thousands of people are killed by guns because we allow this freedom, because some white man has this conception of freedom, a love of a phallic symbol, which means that they want to keep it to the expense of everyone else. So why has this failed? And there are two main reasons. Firstly, that whole idea of freedom. Because it's freedom that says you should be able to do all these things. It places an onus on you if you haven't done them. Well, why haven't you gone out and become the leader of a big company? You're able to. You have all the abilities. The state's going to let you do that. And so it says that you have all these freedoms, but then it makes them contingent on cost. It makes them contingent on your ability to pay for all these freedoms. And we see that that place of harm for people, that places blame on them if they fail to get it, that means that they are faith in the American dream erodes. They don't dream it anymore because they can't reach those heights. They know that, society knows that, and instead we still place this burden on people, expect them to go higher. Secondly, because we have all this freedom, there's going to be irresponsible use. And when we have all this sort of use, people look at the freedom that they have and see the sort of uses that people are using and they say, that's not something we really like, that's something pretty bad, that's something pretty harmful. As a result, their whole idea and this freedom being a really good thing, a really positive thing, that belief, all the roads, that American dream goes away. In the words of George Carlin, the American dream is called that because in order to believe it, you have to be asleep. I urge you to open your eyes and vote with the opposition.